Dear viewers, Drishti IS welcomes you to the new series of Simplified. Today's topic of discussion is major reforms and commissions in British India. We will cover this topic in the following parts: education related reforms and commissions, press reforms and commissions, and famine reforms and commissions. So first is education related reforms and commissions. In 1781 establishment of Calcutta Madrasa by Warren Hastings. In 1791 establishment of Banaras Sanskrit College with efforts of Jonathan Duncan. For 1813 Charter Act rupees 1 lakh for education in India. Now second is Charles Woods Dispatch 1854. It was big plan for India's future education. formation of regulatory system of education on all india level it was the magna carta of indian education major recommendations were english is the best medium for higher education promotion of native languages to bring european knowledge to the masses and granting aid to encourage individual efforts emphasis was on the importance of vocational education and the need for establishment of technical schools it supported women's education next is hunter education commission 1882 to 83 it was appointed to review the progress made in the field of education after 1854 but it was limited to review of primary and secondary education Major recommendations were primary education should be in local language and useful subjects secondary education in two sections literary education for university and practical education for professional life promotion of women's education after recommendations punjab university and allahabad university were established in 1882 and 1887 respectively Next is Indian Universities Act 1904. In 1901, then Viceroy Curzon called a meeting in Shimla. Outcomes of meeting were as follows: recommendation of appointment of professors and lecturers for studies and research in universities. Government's control over universities increased. The Governor General was given the right to determine the territorial boundaries of the universities. Now next is Sandler University Commission 1917 to 19. It was formed to study the possibilities of Calcutta University. President was Dr. M. E. Sandler. Two Indian members were Dr. Ashutosh Mukherjee and Dr. Zia Uddin Ahmed. It supported going to university after 12 years of schooling and post intermediate examination instead of high school. extension of facilities for women's education and creation of a special board for women's education in the university of calcutta now moving on to harto committee 1929 this committee appointed a subsidiary committee under the chairmanship of sir philip harto to report on the development of education emphasis was on national importance of primary education and providing vocational and industrial education to rural students next is vardha scheme of basic education in 1937 mahatma gandhi published a series of articles in his journal the harijan which was called vardha scheme of basic education in this suggestions for training supervision testing and administration of teachers were included education should be centered around some productive form of manual work now next comes the sergeant plan of education 1944 it was the national education plan prepared by the central advisory board of education recommendation for establishment of elementary and higher secondary schools comprehensive free and compulsory education to children of the age 6 to 11 years 
now covering the next part that is press reforms and commissions james augustus hickey published india's first printed newspaper the bengal gazette in 1780 now let's see the censorship of press act 1799 lord wellesley passed the censorship of press act in 1799 and imposed the following censors on all newspapers it was mandatory to print the name of the editor printer and owner of newspaper all the articles to be published should be sent to the government for pre censorship this act was later extended in 1807 and covered magazines books and pamphlets for violating these rules punishment was immediate deportation now next is licensing regulations ordinance 1823 it was enacted by john adams key provisions included were license was mandatory to printer and publisher to set up a press fine of rupees 400 or imprisonment for literature published without license magistrate had power to seize the press without a license governor general had power to cancel any license next is press act of 1835 charles metcalf repealed licensing regulations ordinance 1823 he is called the liberator of indian press now next is vernacular press act 1878 it was passed by lord lytton it curtailed the freedom of indian language press it imposed pre censorship the district magistrate had the right to get the any printer or publisher of indian languages newspapers to sign the bond for not writing anti government magistrates decision was final appeal not allowed cases registered against newspapers like som prakash bharat mihir dhakka prakash etc now third and last dimension that is famine reforms and commissions famines were bengal 1769 to 70 Madras 1781 to 82 Delhi Agra 1860 to 61 After these famine Colonel Smith was appointed for its investigation and solution After the famine of 1866 in Odisha Madras North Bengal and Bihar a committee was formed under the chairmanship of Sir George Campbell Madras Bombay Uttar Pradesh and Punjab were affected by the famine of 1876 to 78 in which about 50 lakh people died now next is strachy commission 1880 this commission was set up under the chairmanship of sir richard strachy recommendations were as follows it should be the duty of the government to provide food to the helpless poor this assistance may be in the form of cooked food food grains or money reduction in land tax and other rents famine aid by the provincial government central assistance was to be made available whenever necessary arrangement for shifting of milch animals to green areas in case of severe drought now lastly macdonnell commission 1901 lord curzon set up a commission under the chairmanship of anthony macdonnell Recommendations were as follows famine commissioner should be appointed in the famine affected area temporary wells should be dug money should be distributed for animals and seeds and loans should be given to the peasants so that's all for today stay tuned for the next episode thanks for watching